Oh yeah, right. And in today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to try and build on the survey that we did last lesson, and we're going to create a graph using numbers. Now, when numbers opens up, uh, we want to first of all make sure that we've got a blank document selected, like so. And you can see that as soon as um, you click on choose, um, the first worksheet will appear. Now essentially the worksheet is one giant table. And you can see we've got lots of rows, lots of columns. Um, now the first row and the first column is actually highlighted grey and this because it's a header row or column. Now if I want to change that because I don't really want column A being a header column, um, I need to use the buttons on the right hand part of the, uh, the, the window. And it's this first button there um, which is uh, choose the number of header columns uh, when they display and I can either click in the center of the button or actually choose zero from the list. And now I need to think about the table uh, to store my results for my first question. Uh, my question was, do you think fox hunting is cruel? And there are two possible answers for this, yes and no. So in cell A1, I'm going to type in my first option, which is yes. And in cell B1, I'm going to type in no. And underneath, I can type in the number of um, people that said yes and the number of people that said no. So eight people said yes and three people said no. Um, at this point, if I wanted to, I could actually shrink down the size of my table because I don't actually need it to be um, the, quite that big. Uh, but in order to make the graph, I need to make sure that the whole thing is selected. So I'm going to start by um, clicking in any one of the cells. Once I've done that, I just need to click and drag from either one of the corners, uh, so either cell A1 or cell B2, uh, and just drag out to make sure that all four cells are selected. Once I've got the cells selected, I can uh, click on the charts button and actually choose any one of the graphs that, that is available to me there. Uh, I'm going to select the 3D bar chart. Um, I can make this graph bigger. I can uh, change the orientation of the 3D. Uh, and the inspector also uh, allows me to uh, customize it so I can actually I can get rid of the, the show legend by clicking on the chart options and unticking show legend. Um, I can click on the axis and I could even include a title on the y axis um, so I can explain what this means. Now the numbers down the side are the number of people that responded to each uh, possible answer. The last stage in making a graph is adding in a title. Now you need to make sure that you explain exactly what your graph is showing. Uh, I'm going to use my question for my title. So I'm going to put, do you think fox hunting is cruel? Like so. Now the last thing that you might want to do is take the graph that we've created in numbers and actually put this into a presentation. So to do that, I'm going to select the graph. I'm going to go edit, copy, and I'm going to open up my presentation and I'm going to make sure that I've got the right slide selected and paste it somewhere on the slide. Like so. Uh, again, you can move it wherever you want and if it's too small, you can actually drag it out and make it appear bigger. I've actually left some space at the side there and that is quite deliberate. Um, it would be an excellent idea and for those students who are wanting to achieve a level six, I'd like to see people um, explaining what their graph shows. To perhaps achieve a little bit more and possibly even a level seven, um, it would be nice to see if you could customize the graph and um, maybe change the fonts, make sure you put a uh, something to explain what the Y axis means uh, possibly even change the colour of the bars. The key thing is, when you are uh, trying to achieve those higher levels, is that you need to be experimenting with the software and seeing exactly what you can do. So anyway, uh, now it's over to you.